But how does someone get in the manosphere? So how do you it? How do you um, divide it where no he is or no he's not? And I see somebody's comment where they say, I think woke Quill. He just said I didn't know it got this deep. I thought it was just a nickname for a space in Black YouTube. I thought the same thing, bro. Until I saw this interview with Courtney Michelle and O'Shea Duke Jackson breaking it down. So I'm not with nobody, cause I don't wanna hurt nobody. Did it over text, didn't call me. Still got love for your mommy. I know you wanna be somebody, even if you gotta leave somebody. I am not in the black manosphere. Let me explain to you why. Something that I think is freaking phenomenal. He's taking his own platform to where it is he's not the star he's like the master conductor of so many black men across this digital landscape look at the platform that he's built look at how it's actually changed the dialogue and, and communication on online and us giving a lot of black men an opportunity to be more than they ever thought they could be i think the man's brilliant did you start the manosphere no. The well, the black sector of the manosphere? No. The black sector, right. No. Who started it? Uh well, so there was two people um I, I felt like as the most instrumental in coming up with like the, the idea. Uh I'll first say, let me give you know Angry Man his props because Angry Man is the one that gave it the actual name, the black manosphere. But to be honest, in my honest opinion, the black manosphere has the most influence um, from Obsidian Mumia Ami. He is who I believe is the godfather of Black Manosphere 2.0 generation. So, All right. So who you guys are seeing on your screen, that is uh, the beautiful Courtney Michelle on the left of you, and that is O'Shea Duke Jackson. He is actually uh, explaining the background of the Manosphere. So basically what O'Shea said is that the three pillars of the Manosphere is Angry Man, himself, O'Shea Duke Jackson, and the godfather of the Manosphere, he said, would be Obsidian Mumia Ali. If you guys are unaware, Obsidian just did a live stream with Just Pearly Things to discuss the issues that the Manosphere is having in regards to her comments about Black people and Africans and things of that nature. So it just makes sense for Obsidian to be the one to address this issue on behalf of the Manosphere to see where they're gonna move next. So this is this is coming from one of the pillars, O'Shea Duke Jackson. So we're gonna continue it. I just wanna let you guys understand that O'Shea is saying that the three pillars are himself, Angry Man, and Obsidian Mumia Ali is the godfather, the real godfather of Manosphere 2.0. This is coming from him. This is not coming from me. So let's continue. He proceeds, in my opinion, because he was the first person to say that, you know, black men need a voice. Mm -hmm. um, he was the first person that got everybody on the Patreon. He was the first person that um, he influenced everybody. You know, I would say even angry man. Um, me too. When I first started listening to him, 2015. So he was the first person saying that, you know, black men wanted to uh, have content for them. They should pay for it. Um, so all of the stuff, black men need to control their own image. Those things were. Uh, Obsidian Mumia Ali's talking points. Mm -hmm. Things you further heard, you know, people like Kevin Samuel say, or people like me say. So there's sex. So I agree with everything that he said. And uh, I want to say kudos to Obsidian for starting the Manosphere and also getting that message out there in regards to Black men having their own space that people have to pay for. Everything that O'Shea said, I definitely and absolutely agree with. So let's continue. So tell me about those, because you have the Manosphere, but then you have sectors of it. What are those? The Black Manosphere sectors represent, I think, the same sectors you see in the mainstream Manosphere. So you have, um, at least it's not prevalent as it used to be, there was MGTOW, men going their own way. So right. that came out with like our section of Ibmore, which was like, you know, um, introspective black men of reform or something like to that effect. So people like BGS, Immore, Black Man, Ram 313, those guys. Then you had your uh, your SYSBM, which has kind of come on a, a little bit more strong, right? Yeah. Which is, you know, Save Yourself Black Man, that's Mad Buzz Driver S. Even though they don't really 
consider themselves a part of the black ministry, they would certainly fall in line with what you would consider the black sector of the ministry. Um, you have guys who are in the, the they're another uh, burgeoning group, the passport bros. Mm -hmm. So passport bros are a part of the ministry. Guys like, you know, um, um, black male travels, uh, you know, the Austin Holloman guy. That's mm -hmm. uh, pretty doing pretty good right now. Mm -hmm. The um, Dennis, um, I believe, is either Jean Pierre or Saint Jean Pierre. Shout out to him. Um, guys like that, Richie, Zoom to Thailand, Richie Mack. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, those guys are um, the black sector. Then you have what you would call a more or less now uh, another group that's burgeoning, more your elite class guys of the Bannosphere. I'm talking about more like educated, so the lead attorney guys like that. Mm -hmm. um, now these guys uh, can, they're not necessarily, um, you would say black manosphere guys uh, because their audience is more broad, but certainly you can identify them as being in the sector. So guys like uh, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews, mm -hmm. the lead attorney, um, Dennis Sperling is more or less a real hardcore, you know, black man is for kind of guy, guys like me. So guys who have like a professional school advantage, even some guys are married, like Brother Gabe A, pocket watching with JT, although mm -hmm. they don't talk about all the time issues that black men are going through relationships, certainly you can identify them as a part of that. Um, you know, Gabe, Brother Gabe A, Brother Antoine Wade. So these guys are related to the black manosphere somewhat indirectly, although they don't, their content is not necessarily about what's going on with men and women like me or Kevin Samuels. Their their relation, their, their content is certainly more or less about professional stuff like pocket watching with JT. Yeah. Like that. Finance. Basically, what O'Shea was uh, explaining was the different sectors of the manosphere. And not just the manosphere, he's talking about manosphere adjacent people that are within the umbrella of the manosphere, but not really manosphere, if that makes sense. Because he's going to explain further what it means to actually be a part of the manosphere. And that's why I said, guys, I'm not a part of the manosphere. Because the way O'Shea Duke Jackson describes it is something that's different than what I thought. And I see somebody's comment where they say, I think, well, Quill, he just said, I didn't know it got this deep. I thought it was just a nickname for a space in black YouTube. I thought the same thing, bro. I honestly did. Until I saw this interview with Courtney Michelle and O'Shea Duke Jackson breaking it down. So it's actually a hierarchy and it's actually a little bit of order, possibly. But we're going to discuss that as well. So let's continue with O'Shea Duke Jackson explaining the principles of the manosphere. But how does someone get in the manosphere? So how do you it how do you um, divide it where no he is or no he's not? Okay, so this this part is very important, guys. It's very important. Pay attention. Because if you're black and you're talking about relationships or right. problems or you know wanting black men to do better. Mm. I, do you guys pull them in and say, hey, you know what? I like how you talking. You should be a part of like, how does that work? How does someone get in the manosphere? How do you differentiate? Yeah, this is manosphere mm -hmm. and this is not. Well, you know, the black manosphere has never been like um, regulated, if you will. But it's, you know, it's usually what you would call um, some sort of stamp of approval. So mm -hmm. you would get a guy that, you know, we saw participating you know, e even in the conversations. And so, you know, one of those guys would have to be brought in, let's say Obsidian, which is the guy that brought in, or Solo TV 84, uh, who's another guy. Shout out to him. He was another okay. guy that was, don't get enough credit for what he's you know, done for our community. But although he's no longer really associated, and at times, I don't like to be associated because of what's going on. But uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, Angry Man, you know, or me. So you would you would go through our black ram three one three. So typically those were the uh, the five points of entry, um, or BGS it more. So but so 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 but usually it would be me. Yeah. Obsidian. So, so you're one of the gatekeepers. Yes, I've always been one of the gatekeepers. Let's, before we get to this video, did y'all understand what 
O'Shea was saying. He said basically to be a part, actually a part of the black manosphere, it would either have to be him, Angry Man, or Obsidian to actually contact you and bring you into the space and say, hey, you are black manosphere. We want you to be a part of the black manosphere. That has not happened. I'm not in the black manosphere, guys. Let me explain to you what I'm here for. My goal is to provide context and clarity to these conversations and also serve as a place of reference for men, in particular black men, when they get jammed up during an argument or a panel show. And the reason why I say that, I'm going to explain to you after O'Shea explains how Obsidian Mamiya Ali is involved in the manosphere. Here we go. Ali, who is one of the three founding fathers of the Black Manosphere, I give him credit over the other two guys, which is myself and Angry Man, as being the real brainchild of the Black Manosphere. I think he is the real godfather. If there's somebody who's at the top of the food chain, as far as thought processes, it is not me, nor is it anybody else. I believe Obsidian is the original mastermind of the Black Manosphere. Other guys like myself, um, and, and, and I'll give a shout out to Angry, he gave it the name, but the idea is more or less, it's, it's Obsidian Media Network. He is the person that really influenced this thing to go where it is. So high praise for Obsidian Mamiya Ali for starting the uh, Manosphere. So shouts out to him. This is coming from O'Shea Duke Jackson. So basically we have the standard. O'Shea Duke Jackson has deemed Obsidian as the Manosphere Godfather. And also Obsidian, Angry Man, and O'Shea are the pillars of the Black Manosphere. Not the whole Manosphere, because there is a white sector, just the Black Manosphere. The whole purpose of those guys starting it, I definitely agree with 100%. But there are some things that I do disagree with. I believe that there is no order in the uh, black manosphere. And I think O'Shea Duke Jackson alluded to that. It's never been any type of, I guess, structure with the manosphere. So it, it's too easy for people to dip in and dip out. Because if you're a part of it, then it has to be some sort of conversation saying, hey, I don't want to be a part of it anymore. But it seems like people just leave or they just start speaking black manosphere talking points and they're allowed to maneuver in these spaces. But the reason why I'm here is to provide context and clarity to these conversations. If you guys don't know, you see a lot of Facebook people in here. So I've been on Facebook for five years. I've only had my YouTube channel for about 15 months. So I've been asking questions. I've been sharing content on Facebook to the point where I have 40,000 followers over there, fully monetized page. So I've been in these spaces for a while, just learning, listening, watching, taking notes. So I found a hole in regards to what was needed in these spaces. To help you understand what I'm talking about, let me show you this video real quick. 54% of black men, single and childless, fully 16% of black men are responsible for 80% of the kids. And you'd say black men do this. No, the black men you fucking make babies with do fuck shit. Okay, so where are the rest of them? Not getting fucked and married, not getting fucked, not getting married until you have already fucked up your life. Then you want us to come to your kids. No, not all of That's us. what they are. are. Um, okay, so. That's um, what they are. You don't want to marry the, the, the squares, the lames and everything else until you done shit out Pookie and Ray Ray's bastard ass kids. No, see, listen. And then y'all also think that being the nice guys, that, that's the bare minimum. Being a nice person is what you should be. They always say the nice well, guy. Well, then if that's the bare minimum, what your if that's the bare minimum, oh, if what you, you if that's that the bare men, minimum, what if that's the bare minimum, what is the sixteen percent of these dudes making eighty percent of the kids? Well, that if has to being be a nice guy is the bare minimum. That's what are they? Listen to K. But go ahead. If the sixteen percent who are making eighty percent of the kids, they're beneath the guys who are doing the bare minimum. Where are they? See, you what you what we do in this community, and it's being shown. That's why I'm so, so glad there are more black channels opening up with more black people having a conversation, men and women. And women are actively talking about, yeah, we say we want the nice guy, but we really want Tupac in the suit. We want Clark Kent and Superman to all be the same dude. And we only come to this realization after we've evacuated our womb with somebody else's kids. We don't get we don't come to this realization when we're young childless 
and able to be worked with. We come to you with issues, drama, trauma, and you expect the guy who didn't make those babies to stand in the gap with you. And if you don't, he's a sellout. Bullshit. Um, so, I mean, I'm always say something about the 16 to 80 thing, like, they make up these numbers. I'm, I think that's See, so the girl in the middle said they just make up these numbers. K is questioning the statistics that Kevin just said, right? So let's continue. Not necessarily. I don't think that's verified. I don't, care if, it's, I don't care if it's, it's precise. The problem I mean, is 30% of black men are married, 54% of single and childless. But we do know that in Memphis, three men had I, 87 children. We do know that. We know that's more. Anybody, most men don't have most. What we do know is the things we hear talked about on the panels aren't the men you see every day walking around. No. They're the they're the they're the outliers. They're not the norm. Both women question Kevin Samuels as to the you know the validity of the statistics that he pointed out. And Kevin's response was, I don't care, it's verifiable. That's not good enough, guys. So this is what happened. Prior to entering these spaces, I sat back and watched the discussions. And one thing I noticed is that black men would quote a certain statistic, like the 54% of black men don't have children. But when black when a black woman would ask, where'd you get the stat from? And the black man in question would say Kevin Samuels. And then the follow-up question would be, well, where did he get that number from? And they'd say either black demographics or I don't know. Now, I checked black demographics and that 54% of black men without children isn't on there. Kevin's saying, I don't know, that's not a proper response because that gives them room to question. Does that make sense? So if she says, I don't believe that those statistics are true, where did you get that number from? And I say, I don't know. They're just verifiable. That's not a good enough answer. So the way I decided to help black men was to use my professional and educational background with reading, interpreting, and quantifying statistics and provide videos explaining the process and provide references on these topics so when a black man is asked, they can say with confidence that media men provided proof of what we're talking about. This is what you guys see on my page right now. Now, obviously, I wasn't the first to present this data in these spaces because 54% of black men not having children was actually right. Kevin was right. And also, shout out to BGS Itmore for possibly breaking down these numbers in the past because there was a certain there was a few gentlemen who mentioned in the comment section that BGS said that a while ago. However, they have never provided a link, and I couldn't find it readily, readily available on his page. So I've seen guys after I put out the statistics, they'll say BGS already already broke these down, and 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 if he did, I want to say kudos to him for breaking these numbers down, but they never provide a link saying otherwise. And also there's so many men that didn't know the actual numbers. So I don't know if that was a, a, a older video that BGS put out. I'm not sure, but I'm glad to provide my assistance and break down these numbers for you guys in real time, in present day. Go ahead and make sure you click that link, get you some Tej Hanley and support the Media Man YouTube channel and also support Tej Hanley.